We're back from SEMA Show 2019, and it was huge. Let's get back into that Las Vegas mood. Oh, yeah. Okay, now let's recap a few of my favorite things from this year's event. <coughs> Keep in mind, the SEMA show is big. So big, it's actually kind of hard to really grasp. Here are just some numbers for perspective. 161,000 attendees this year. 2,400 exhibiting companies. 2.2 million square feet of exhibits and attractions. In it, more than 1,500 featured vehicles. This year, about 45 of those were Supras. Clearly, it would be almost impossible to see and do everything in just a couple days. So in this video, I'm going to touch on a few of the things that really stood out to me. Over in the FCA booth, there were some really great builds. Everything from a Jeep J6 to the Wrangler concept to the Mopar Lowline concept. But the one that really kept me coming back was the M715 5 quarter. Powered by a Hellcat engine putting out more than 700 horsepower, this resto mod resurrects the Kaiser of 1968, but with a lot of thoroughly modern touches, including a retractable shot dispenser. Does this thing nail SEMA show or what? Do those cans in the back contain whiskey or gin? Probably. Connecting the two main conference centers is a walkway takeover by Toyo Tires. Here were two Porsches that stopped me in my tracks. This one was built by TJ Russell. He was a fabricator over at Singer Vehicle Design before going out on his own. The Carrera 4 Baja features 12 inches of suspension travel, a designer interior, and a built 3.8 liter air-cooled flat six, good for 350 horsepower. Word is these are going into limited production next year. Right next to it was this gorgeous little thing built by Edison Sarkisan. It's a 1955 Porsche 550 Spider with a dose of spiker steampunk style thrown in for good measure. Classic Japanese cars were in full force this year. Honda really embraced them this year with Daniel Wu's 1968 S800 Coupe Outlaw. I only wish I got more shots of it. I was so busy taking photos, I forgot to get enough videos. So here's some photographs of it. It is fitted with air suspension, a wide body kit, and a rebuilt 70 horsepower original engine. Cause really, when you look that cool, do you need to go fast? Honda also brought out their hilarious VFR 800-powered N600 mini car. Yes, they took a 1969 N600 that originally had 36 horsepower, and they stuffed in a 115 horsepower Superbike engine. To make this weird concoction possible, they used a number of Mazda Miata parts, Polaris seats, and Camaro bumpers. SEMA isn't usually where manufacturers show off their latest in electric tech, but this year might be a turning point. Chevrolet brought out a C10 converted to electricity called, appropriately enough, the E10. But here's the interesting part. More than just showing off, Chevy is looking at making this setup a kit so owners can electrify their own weekend cruisers. It's such a smart idea, I'm surprised nobody thought of it before. 
The E10's setup is good for 450 horsepower and they expect it can do the 0 to 60 run in only 5 seconds. Ford didn't just bring electric, they brought it in the form of a Mustang with a 6-speed manual transmission. Called the Mustang Lithium, this one-off makes more than 900 horsepower and a thousand pound-feet of torque. Co-developed with Wabasto, the electric Mustang weighs about the same as a GT500, and it has a 50-50 weight balance due to clever placement of the power packs. Before you pull out your wallet, this is a concept only for now. However, keep your eye to the LA Auto Show next month to see the e mach Mustang-inspired electric SUV if you want what is possibly the next best thing. Only, eh, that's gonna be a crossover, so not really. Moving on. GM wasn't just about the classics and production rides, they also brought out one of their military projects, which fit in surprisingly well. This is the Colorado ZR2-based Infantry Squad Vehicle Prototype, with stripped-down bodywork, nine individual seats, and exterior-mounted gear. It looks more like a supersized Polaris than a truck. Under that lack of skin is a 2.8-liter Duramax inline-4 with a six-speed automatic. It only makes about 186 horsepower in this build, but would you really want your limbs hanging out of anything faster? Next year, the U.S. government will decide if they want to buy a bunch of these or not. If they do, look for them on a battlefield near you in the coming years. Without a doubt, this was the year of the Supra. In fact, Toyota's booth was almost completely Supras. Oh, and one Rutledge Wood. They brought out the racing and GT4 concepts that premiered in Geneva earlier this year. And if you watched my review of the Supra, I did point out how all the vents were closed off. Well, on the GT4, they're all open. So they're not just for looks, potentially. Other builds include the Wasabi, naturally in green, the Performance Line concept. This one was designed by Rutledge Wood. I always pictured him as more of a forerunner guy. Oh, and there's the 3000 GT concept, which was incredible in person. They really should just sell that wing as a factory option. But of all the Supras, my favorite was the Heritage Edition. This one does a better job than the production car in carrying the original vibe of the Supra into 2020. Yeah, it's still manufactured by Magna Steer and co-developed with BMW, but, you know, let's just get over that. Now, this thing really carries that super vibe, probably because that wing isn't just like a Mark IV wing. It actually is a Mark IV wing. They just cut it to fit. With some extra tuning, this particular car also makes 503 horsepower, and it sits three inches lower. Yes, please. With so many great cars, I think we need a lightning round for a few more. Okay, this is a 1949 Hudson Coupe Barn Find by Icon that has been swapped out with a supercharged LS9 putting out 638 horsepower. Straight up gangster. The Ring Brothers always impress. This year's contribution is the Valkyria. Originally a 1969 Camaro, it's been stuffed with a built LS3 putting down 890 horsepower. The details and paint were lawless, which is probably why it was hanging out in the BASF paint booth. Sean Bassett's 1972 Datsun 240Z Time Attack car was sick! Yeah, that's a classic Z under all the bodywork. It is 12 inches wider than stock and stuffed with an LS engine. I really have to hand it to Ford. Every year they seem to make their Ford out front demos even better. And this year was no exception.
It was simply incredible. And then there was Hoonigan, who brought their burn yard with them from LA. So many tires were destroyed, the crowd loved it, and yeah, it was awesome. And so that's it for another SEMA show. With so many people and so many cars, it's pretty much guaranteed I missed something that you would have loved. So what most impressed you? Was it something I just covered, or was it something you saw somewhere else? Post a comment below. I expect next year's show will be loaded with mid-engine CA Corvettes, so that should be interesting. Water. <laughs>